Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is another makeup wish list video. I did my first one a few weeks ago and it's kind of similar to the Will I Buy It videos that you see here on YouTube, but I also am including some random products that are kind of on my thinking about list, my wish list, just things that I'm curious about that are not necessarily new launches. They're just things that have piqued my interest for whatever reason. So we're going to start out with the newer items and then I'll end the video with a few random things that I'm kind of interested in trying. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do a lot of drugstore and high-end makeup content on my channel. I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe, but let's go ahead and get into my makeup wish list. Move myself over here to give me enough room, hopefully, to insert my pictures. I want to start this video with something I actually just saw posted on Instagram, like literally as I was sitting down to film this video, and this was like, oh my gosh, as soon as that's available, I will be buying this. And it's from Patrick Ta Beauty, and it's the Major Headline Blush Palette with the creams and the powders. So it's three different blushes with the cream and the powders. And if you're new here, you may not know, but I have a few of his cream powder blush duos, and I love them. Those are phenomenal. And these three colors, it looks like, are three new colors. They're not part of the permanent collection. But this, I will for sure be buying. There's not much detail as to when it will be available, but that will be coming soon, it looks like, and that I will for sure be buying. Next, we have a new launch from Glossier, which I was excited to see this because I feel like we haven't seen too many new launches from them. They definitely don't release products that often, but they are coming out with their first eyeshadow quads and they are actually already out. They are called the Monochromatic Palettes and they come in 10 different color stories. And basically the compacts are refillable. So it looks to me like you can pop them out and buy refills for them. So you use your same compact and just replace the palette is what I'm getting from just what I've seen about them. It looks like the refills are $18 and the compact itself is $22. Um, now I don't, I understand the refillable concept in terms of, you know, not wasting having multiple packages, I guess, but if you are looking at it from the standpoint of using up an eyeshadow palette and buying another one, I don't know how many people actually use up a palette and would need to like refill it. But anyway, those are now available on Glossier.com and they have mattes, metallics, and satin shades in the palettes. There was one that really caught my attention right off the bat, and it's the green one. It's kind of more of an olive -y, golden looking green. That color story really, really speaks to me. Um, I have not gotten one yet, but it is kind of on my radar. I would like to try out the green one, possibly. I have not seen anyone really review them, so I don't know much about them other than what I've shared with you. So let me know if you're interested in those. Maybe I'll pick one up and try it out. Next, we have the new holiday palette from Charlotte Tilbury. It's called the Instant Smoky Eye Palette. Retails for $75. I've actually already bought this palette. I actually bought it yesterday. I have not used it yet. That will be coming soon in a video. When I made my list for this video, I had not purchased it yet. I have it now. So this will be coming soon, but this is one of her larger eyeshadow palettes that she comes out with every holiday. I actually did not get the holiday palette last year, but I did get it the year before. And it was called Eyes to Hypnotize, I think was the name of it. Very, very pretty. All of her holiday palettes do have a very similar look to them. They all come with the three 
shade uh, groupings together. There's four of them and she kind of groups three shades together and calls them different things. That's kind of how she structures her eyeshadows in general. I was undecided about this at first, but I'm a Charlotte Tilbury collector. I just love the brand. I love everything about it. I love the packaging and her eyeshadows are beautiful. They're great quality and I don't know, this one was speaking to me, so I went ahead and picked it up. I will be doing a video here in the next few days. Next, we have something new from Milk Makeup, and this is very intriguing, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's like a gimmicky kind of thing or if this would actually do something, but they are coming out, or it's already out, the Milk Hydro Grip eyeshadow and concealer primer. So basically it's like an eyeshadow primer that you would use on your eyelids first before your eyeshadow and you're also supposed to be able to put it under your eyes as a concealer primer. It's supposed to make your concealer go on better. It's supposed to make it last longer. It's supposed to make it look smoother under your eyes. That is very intriguing. I just don't know. It is probably a fine eyeshadow primer, I'm guessing, but I've never, I think a few brands have come out with concealer primers. I've never tried one personally, so I don't know, but that seems kind of too good to be true. It also seems like an extra step you would have to add under your eyes. Like for me, I always use a color corrector, so I would have to use the primer, then the color corrector, then concealer, and then a powder on top if I set the concealer. So I don't know about that, but it, the ingredients in it are very intriguing. Hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and aloe water. So it's supposed to be really hydrating and soothing for your under eyes. Kind of sounds like an eye cream and a primer all in one. I'm kind of curious about this. It also says it's supposed to lock in color with your eyeshadows and prevent eyeshadow creasing like most eyeshadow primers claim to do. This I'm very curious about. Let me know your thoughts. I'm thinking about getting it maybe during the Sephora sale next month. I don't know. We will see. I haven't seen any reviews on it yet, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Next, we have the holiday palettes from Hourglass. You guys, these tempt me every single year and I swore up and down this year I was not gonna buy the holiday ambient palette from Hourglass. They're expensive, they're $80. They did at least come out with two different color stories this year. One is a little bit lighter for, I would say, light to medium skin tones, and the second one is a little bit deeper, which is good. I'm glad that they did that. The packaging this year is so pretty. It's a marble look packaging. Spoiler, I already bought this as well. I bought this when I bought the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette yesterday and truly I had no intention. This was not even a thought in my mind that I was going to buy this palette and then I went in store and I saw it and I swatched it and yeah, I convinced myself that I needed it. I have the last two years of these palettes. I've only been buying them really since I started YouTube. They are beautiful, but you guys, I don't reach for face palettes, yet I continue to buy them. They speak to me, but yet I don't reach for them. I do not know what that's about because I love them. The Hourglass products are beautiful. The powders from Hourglass, very, very beautiful, but I will not reach for these palettes, yet I bought it. I bought it, I haven't used it yet. I will use it in an upcoming video, but yeah, they got me with this one. Let me know your thoughts. I know some people are all for these palettes. Some people think they're very boring because yes, they do come out with this palette every single year, but they got me. Ooh, okay, next is something that I will definitely be buying. It's not available yet. It comes out on the 12th. So today is the night that comes out this coming Tuesday. It's from Tower 28. It's called the Sunny Days SPF 30 Tinted Moisturizer. It comes in 14 shades, supposed to be light to medium buildable coverage. 
a natural finish, fragrance-free, and it's a mineral-based tinted moisturizer. It is tinted, obviously, so you don't have to worry about a white cast, um, and I am very excited for this. This has been getting a lot of hype just on Instagram since it's been announced, so I think this is going to be a very popular product on YouTube, most likely. I'm kind of surprised that it's coming out this time of year, and it's not I feel like this would have been like a spring summer launch for them typically because that's when tinted moisturizers, skin tints, that kind of thing usually start really coming out earlier in the year when the weather is getting warm. But nevertheless, I like a lighter coverage product all year round. Doesn't really matter what the weather is. I love to try them and I will definitely be getting this one. I haven't tried a ton from Tower 28. I do have one of their blushes that I really like, and then I have the Bronzino bronzer, and I think that's it. I don't have anything else from Tower 28, but I love those two products that I do have, and I'm very excited about this. I will definitely be picking this up and reviewing it. All right, this next one, I've gone back and forth several times about whether or not I'm gonna buy this. I have not purchased it yet, but I don't know, I do know why, but I don't know why this is calling to me. And it's the new Morphe palette with Jaclyn Hill, the Divine Neutrals eyeshadow palette. Do I need another neutral eyeshadow palette? No. I have not tried Morphe eyeshadows in a few years. I had one or two of their palettes back when I first started YouTube, um, and they were okay. I don't have them anymore. I decluttered them. I actually never had the original Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I never got that palette. I know that was like a cult classic. A lot of people still love that palette. I never had it. I never tried it. I also never tried her vault collection that she did with Morphe a few years ago. I think that's been discontinued now. I actually just saw that a few days ago at Marshalls. They had the whole, they had all four of the vault eyeshadow palettes. So I'm assuming it's being discontinued, but for some reason I'm very tempted by this palette. Please let me know your thoughts. If you would like to see me review it, let me know in the comments. I don't know. I just, something about the color story just kind of speaks to me, but do I need another neutral eyeshadow palette? No. I will say it's very interesting. I've seen a few people say that the color story reminds them of the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. So I kind of want to compare the two because I love my Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette, as you know. But I will say when I looked at the Divine Neutrals from Morphe, it does, the colors do remind me slightly of the Patrick Ta palette. So I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. It's fairly affordable. It retails for $18, so I'm thinking about buying it. I haven't done it yet. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know Morphe and Jaclyn Hill, both very uh, talked about topics here on YouTube. I, I like Jaclyn Hill personally. I think she's one of those people that no matter what she does, somebody is going to come for her. I kind of I kind of feel bad for her it, it, to be honest. I don't have a ton of Jaclyn makeup or anything like that, but I will say I have been watching her videos for years since way before I started a YouTube channel. So, I personally like her and I don't know, I'm very curious about this palette. So, let me know uh, your thoughts in the comments. Moving on to some Pat McGrath releases that are coming out. She does a big holiday collection every year. I've never tried Pat McGrath eyeshadow. I've never tried the blushes. The only things I've tried from her line is the concealer, the under eye powder, and a lip liner. I haven't tried anything else from her. And I mentioned in another video, I am itching to try the eyeshadows. I keep seeing things about her eyeshadows and her blushes, actually. I really want to try a blush. I know that she's coming out with a blush trio. I think it's already available. 
And then the palette is the Celestial Odyssey palette. It's a pretty large palette from her, which that kind of concerns me because I've mentioned before, I tend to not reach for large eyeshadow palettes. I don't know why I always reach for like my mid-sized eyeshadow palettes. When you start getting into more than like 15 shades, I don't reach for it. I don't know what that is, but I just don't. But the colors in this palette, and this I have actually seen a few reviews on, and they were very good, the ones that I saw. The colors in here look very, very pretty. It's a pretty good mix of neutrals and colors, it looked like to me. I have not seen it in person, but I've seen videos on it, and I've seen pictures, obviously. But it's expensive. It retails for $78. I am on the fence about this one. It's on my loves list in my Sephora app, so I don't know if I'll end up buying this or not, but I'm very curious to try Pat McGrath. I don't know if I should try this or if I should get one of her permanent large palettes. I think those are pretty expensive. I think they're like $129 or something. Let me know your thoughts, but I will say the Celestial Odyssey palette got my attention. All right, one more eyeshadow palette. This one, I really don't, I don't need this at all. I really, really don't. The Too Faced Christmas Coffee Mini Palette. Have you guys seen this? So Too Faced always comes out with these little tiny six pan mini eyeshadow palettes. I've never had any of them. Honestly, mainly because none of the color stories have ever really spoken to me that much, but the Christmas Coffee Palette does. And honestly, I'm wondering if it's all the colors or if it's because the packaging is cute and it's called the Christmas Coffee Mini Eyeshadow Palette because I am definitely a sucker for packaging. I definitely fall for that kind of stuff. So I would like to see it in person. I've seen, I think there's another mini palette from Too Faced that's already out. And I saw that at Ulta the other day. I don't remember the name of it, but I did see it. Um, and they had the space for the Christmas coffee mini palette, but they're, they weren't there. So I guess they haven't gotten them in yet, but I don't need this palette, you guys. I mean, these, these eyeshadow palette releases are just, this time of year, they just keep coming. They just keep coming. But for some reason, this little palette caught my attention. There is one shade in particular that really caught my eye, and it's like the color of my shirt. It's a green, like a forest green shimmer. And again, I've only seen the pictures. I've only seen a picture of a swatch. So I don't know what it would look like in person, but I would like to at least see it and see what I think. So let me know your thoughts about this, but I really don't need it. So Makeup by Mario just released some lipsticks and they are the Ultra Suede Matte Lipsticks. They retail for $24 and they come in 20 shades. Right now, I think they're online only at Sephora, or obviously you can order them from the Makeup by Mario website. There are some really pretty colors in these lipsticks, and I feel like Makeup by Mario would do lipsticks really, really well. He did have the lip palette that came out with his very first collection. I don't have that, um, but I've seen pretty good reviews of that, so I feel like his lipsticks are probably very good. There wasn't really a shade that I like was drawn to initially, just when I looked at the swatches and the pictures, they all looked very pretty. A pretty good range of neutrals and colors. There was a good red range, a good nude range, and a good like pinky, rosy, even mauve purpley range. So I'm kind of curious about these. Haven't heard anybody review them, so I'm not sure what's being said about them, but I am kind of wanting to pick one up. Again, with lipstick, maybe it's just me, but I like to see lipsticks in person. 
I just don't love to order them without seeing them. I like to physically see the color and swatch it on my hand and see what it looks like. I just feel like I have a hard time picking a lipstick color just from a website. Do you know what I mean? Let me know if you're like that, but I am considering picking one of these up. Okay, let's talk about a few random things that I really want to try and I'm thinking about trying for a video. So the first thing is, or actually the first two things are two brands that I'm very interested in. The first one is Koki Cosmetics. Has anyone tried anything from this brand? From what I can tell, you used to be able to buy it at Walmart, I think. Now you cannot. You have to buy it from Rite Aid, Kroger, and a few other retailers. I was not super familiar with. I saw them on the Koki website. I'm very curious about that brand. They have really a full range of products. They have lip products, they have eyeshadow palettes, they have concealer, foundation. I think they even have a under eye corrector, I think, if I saw that. I'm pretty sure I saw that on the Koki Cosmetics website. Let me know if you've tried anything. I've been thinking about maybe ordering some things and doing a review of that brand. I've seen Kelly Gooch here on YouTube. She talks about a lot of their products a lot. They also make nail polishes, I think. I actually went to a Sally's Beauty the other day because when I was on the Koki website, it did say Sally's Beauty also carries Koki, but the Sally's Beauty I went to had just the nail polishes. They didn't actually have the makeup. They did have a few of the makeup products online. Um, but let me know if you know anything about this brand. I don't know a lot other than, I, I don't know, it's just something that's kind of piqued my interest. I don't see a ton of people talking about them. So let me know if you'd want to see a video on Koki Cosmetics. Another brand that I'm very, very interested in is Nopla. I feel like I've seen people talking about that brand for a little while now. I know they have, I think it's the side-by-side -side eyeshadow palette. It's a neutral eyeshadow palette that a lot of people really seem to like. That has kind of interested me. I think they also make lip liners, blushes, like really luminous blushes. I think they might be called skin glazes, maybe. I could be wrong about that, but... I think they were actually on Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty this year, and I meant to order one, but then I don't know what happened, but I missed that day somehow. I didn't end up ordering one, but I think the blushes and their bronzers are pretty popular. I've never tried anything from Nabla, so let me know if you've tried anything. If there's anything you want me to try, please let me know. I think they are available on Nabla.com. And then I know some of the things are on Ulta's website, I'm pretty sure. And then I think Morphe also carries Nabla. I could be wrong, but I think they do. Very curious about that brand as well. So let me know if you've tried anything from them and if you liked it or not. I also have a few random things on my Sephora love list. I tend to do that. I add things to my love list and then when a sale comes around, I'll like go back through the list. I will definitely do a Sephora sale wish list video when we get a little bit closer to the sale. I think this year it starts on November the 5th for Rouge members. I will do a whole separate video on that, but something that I'm interested in is the Kosas bronzer. Now I can't remember what they're called, but there's three of them. They're in that mint compact packaging. I have been curious about that bronzer since it came out. Also, I've tried the Kosas Cloud Set Powder and I love that. I feel like it's the same formula just in a bronzer. That's something that has definitely been on my radar for quite a bit, so I might end up picking that up during the sale. I'm also really wanting to try more from Lawless. I mentioned in my first makeup wishlist video, I really wanted to try the new Lawless foundation. 
I have not ordered it yet. I've seen some reviews of it and it seems like people are either really, really liking it or really, really not liking it. Let me know your thoughts, uh, but that one is still kind of on my radar as well as the Lawless Blushes. I think they're called the Velvet Make Me Blush Blushes, maybe. Those get really, really good reviews. I have not tried them, obviously, but that's something I'm very interested in, as well as a Pat McGrath blush. Let me know if you've tried the blushes and what your thoughts are. I'm thinking maybe I'll try just a single blush or one of her trios that are coming out for the holidays. Let me know your thoughts, but those are just a few things that are on my Sephora loves list, but like I said, I'll do a separate video when we get a little closer to the sale. And that is gonna be it for my second makeup wish list video. These are really fun to film. I think I definitely will keep on doing these moving forward. It's a fun way for me to kind of keep a list and keep track of things that have interested me and you guys can let me know if you've tried them or if you're interested in seeing a review of them, you can let me know in the comments. But thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I did film this makeup look if you're curious. I am not sure if it'll be up before or after this video goes, goes live, but if it is live, I will link it for you. If it's not, it's coming in the next few days. So thank you so much for watching. Also, please follow me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair01. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, simply be you.